Hi, my name is Sam Led, and welcome to The Fearless Now. This is for you, you, and you in the nosebleed seats. If you're looking for an easier way to approach anxiety, stress, and unhealthy habits from the inside out, there's no techniques and no strategies. So sit back, relax, and let me be your peace of mind Uber driver here on The Fearless Now. Hello, everybody. My name is Sam Led. I am a transformational coach, and this is The Fearless Now podcast. And I got a special guest here today. I'm so excited. Uh, I was on his podcast and it was wonderful. Um, and he's a really special guy, a very gifted young man. He's struggling right now. Um, I want you to, to really drop in with me and, and really kind of get an idea of what he's all about because I want you to see beyond our words. I want you to listen beyond our words. and. He's the real deal. Um, uh, I wanted to introduce Daniel Jackson. He's um, again. Can you can you tell the audience what what's your official title? Your my official title is Spirit Medium Daniel. Spirit Medium Daniel. He has that on, monogrammed on all his shirts, by the way. <laughs> Spirit Medium Daniel. Daniel, thank you for coming on. It's such an honor uh, for you thank, to be here. Thank with you us. for having me on, Sam. I appreciate it. And and so this this is um really special because there's so many, you know, there's so many mediums out there that claim to be, claim to be. And, and, yes. and Daniel is not, he, he's, he doesn't work for the Psychic uh, Friends Network. Remember, but, no. Um, he is the real deal and he, he has his own journey to share. And, and it is wonderful that, that someone like Daniel can come on this podcast. And the reason is, is because he is officially, unofficially a coach in his own right. You know, he's, he's a guide um, in, in many respects, guiding his clients through spirit. And he, he's, he sees things that we all see, but he's, he's, he's fine-tuned it. You know, he's, he's, since he was young, been able to do this um, and been able to tap into the, uh, to go there, beyond the veil. And this will be, of course, edited, beyond the veil. Uh, um, Daniel, um, so tell, t- t- I would love to get an idea of, of, I mean, I know, but I would love the audience to kind of get an understanding of, of like, what is the session like? And, you know, how did this come to be? I mean, cause I've heard so many different stories from so many different intuitives and, you know, your story <clears throat> is so authentic and so real. And um, honest. Well, uh, how did it come to be? Uh, I've seen spirit my entire life ever since I was a kid, uh, three, four years old. Uh, but my whole family saw it. We lived in a house in New Jersey, uh, right across the river from Philadelphia. There was a little town there and the town had a little battlefield in it from the, where the Hessians fought the, the war. And, uh, it had a little hospital on it, but all the the homes in that area, from what we heard from other people who lived in that area, the homes were all haunted um, to the point where, like, my sister was getting dressed uh, for school one day and she was in the bathroom with my mom and they stood in front of this full length mirror to check something. And there was another woman standing in the mirror and she had on a colonial outfit oh, wow. uh, to the point where uh, uh, my sister had a, a record player just back in the 70s. You know, you had to pick the record up. And What's you, a record? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's got a file with your name on it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the record, uh, you had to flip the switch to drop that record down and play a record. While my brothers and I would be downstairs watching TV, and then the record player would just turn on and then start playing records. But it wouldn't just play one record. It would switch to another record. Uh, so sometimes it would play like Led Zeppelin, and the next thing you know, it picked that one up and took it off and put Alice Cooper on. So uh, what was their what was their favorite? The, the, uh, the, the Zeppelin. <laughs> Ze- uh, Zeppelin too? I'm, I'm uh, yeah, uh, okay. Official graffiti, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but, um, so yeah, it would do these types of things all the time. It would uh, move ashtrays. Uh, I remember once when I, we, I, my mom and dad and I left the house and moved down to Delaware. My, my brother bought the house from my parents. And he told me a story where he was, uh, a friend of his came over to the home. And had a, there was a big picture window out front and the friend came up to the home, was knocking on the door and couldn't figure out why my brother wasn't answering the door because uh, he said he saw people walking around in the house. And my, he called my brother on the phone and my brother said, uh, I'm not home. We're on a camping trip. <laughs> oh, 
So he saw the people walking around the house. Yeah, that's how that's how much that ho- that house was. But yeah. you've always, but you, but you, since you were very young, been able to, you know, as a cliche, it's a cliche. You go see, I see dead people from. The yeah, I've seen but them. Uh, <clears throat> what was that like? I mean, what was that like the first time? <clears throat> I mean, uh, you know, everyone has a different kind of experience of it, and we all have the ability to see um, beyond the veil. People, loved ones. Your example, the, that old house in, in South Jersey, um, and. I don't, just don't think we pay attention to it enough because we're really stuck in the noise of our head. Right. And, and we're stuck in the, uh, <clears throat> in the ways that we were brought up. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. My, uh, yeah, I was brought up uh, Catholic. So we were told those types of things. Uh, we're not supposed to, to see these types of things. Mm. You know, these, are, these are demons and devils. You're not supposed to be able to talk right, to them. Right. But, uh, but getting used to seeing them all the time, uh, at that point in my life, I guess, made it easier for me as I got older, mm. uh, as much as I started to see. Um, <clears throat> we moved from that house to another house here in Delaware uh, with my parents. and But I was the only one who was seeing stuff after that. No one else mm. was seeing it anymore. And to the point where I was playing a band, uh, I was a drummer for a while. <clears throat> I had the big hair, had the, uh, the, the uh, zebra stripe spandex. It was, it I was could good. see that. Now, you don't you don't want to see that because I don't want to see it now. And uh, I came home from a gig and was laying down in bed. And when I did, something laid down next to me. Literally felt the the bed push mm. down, the pillow push down. It did that like four or five times, and then <clears throat> I got up to look around. And when I did, whatever was there picked up the blanket that I had on me and took froze it up to the ceiling and shook it above me. And then it dropped it on me. Mm. And then after that, I slept on the couch for two years. So, yeah, I would too. I would sleep in, in the <clears throat> closet with the door, you know, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but I, w- I was used to seeing these types of things. I was with a, a girlfriend in that house one time. She was at the foot of the bed and I was at the other end watching TV and some big white thick thing about maybe two feet thick and five feet long, just kind of oozed its way out of the closet real slowly, like a snake. <clears throat> and, um, it just went across the room and all of a sudden, it just disappeared. And I was like, and she turned around to me and she said, did you see that? And I was like, yeah, let, let's get the heck out of here. But I, I, I just got used to it after a while. Like, uh, you know, when, if you, if you don't like uh, green beans, but your mom makes you eat green beans all the time, you just That's, get used to it. I love that metaphor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the intuitive green bean uh, metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. Yes. I, I, I've always been curious <clears throat> about what, I kind of get it, but what, uh, in terms of why some people can see and why some people really can see beyond that veil and when others can't see, even though we all have the ability to, but why do you think that is? I mean, I, I, mean, I can't really, when I think about like, because we're paying attention to the noise mm-hmm. in our head and, and, and caught up in the world of the form versus the world, the much more expansive and, 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 um, and wonderful world of the formless. Um, the, you know, because the brain is, a, is, is, is interfering sometimes with our ability to be intuitive and, and yes. clairvoyant. Is, yes. why do, you, is, do you think it's that or, or is it just, is it trauma that, is it certain traumas? Um, <clears throat> I think it's programming. <clears throat> I think it's the programming throughout the world that, uh, you know, parents tell their, their kids, uh, oh, they have imaginary friends or mm. uh, don't listen or don't pay attention to this stuff. Uh, just stop listening to that stuff. And <clears throat> you may have some voices in your head. Stop listening to that stuff. Because, I mean, people who grow up and who are told or who tell other people that voices in their head, uh, they usually send them to a to a, a, a hospital, state hospital for that. Um, <clears throat> and especially kids. Kids pick up on everything. They see everything. They, kids see everything that I do now. Uh, but But their parents teach them this is not a good thing. So. Yeah, and then you get taught the ways of the world. And when you get taught the ways of the world, the, all that's the all in italics. The ways yeah, all the, of the world. All the, all the pain and anger, sorrow, grief, guilt, all that stuff, because you didn't come into this world with it. And once you get taught that, mm. you, you're, you, you think a different way. And the perfect analogy for that, uh, Sam, is if you take two children of the age of two years old, they're very race, creed, and color, and you stick them in one big room, and then you turn, them, turn two of those kids around and tell them, I want you to point to me which other kids in here do you hate? 
those kids are going to look at you like, we don't know what you're talking about because they haven't learned how to hate anybody. They haven't learned anything. And it's interesting. And I love, you know, that, that you, you, that you mentioned conditioning and, and, and when, when we're kids, we don't have that, that same level of conditioning. Um, right. Because our brain is forming, our cortex is forming. And it's almost like, you know, we're born with an Atari 2600. And as we get older, the memory, the, the, the computer gets more sophisticated or unquotes, you know, <clears throat> the illusion that, that our brain gets more sophisticated. I, what I do think is, is the brain is as only as good as who's operating it. And, and right. so kids, kids, because their brain is forming and also because they're taking in stimuli and, and, and storing it as, as you know, the formative years. And I, I think it's over at, I think it's past age eight that we then really begin to start developing memories. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting because when I, when I first kind of could see for better or for worse, um, I was very young and it was a real clear signal. And as I got older, there, there, there was more multipath distortion, if you know what I mean, in terms of. Right. Being able to Absolutely. See. Yeah. And, and so <clears throat> I, I wonder, I wonder if, if the conditioning part is actually a good thing, because if we can see beyond the conditioning as we get older and we have an event like a trauma, something happens to us, right? right. Whatever it is, health related accident. Um, you get in trouble with the law, whatever, it doesn't matter. That can either be a big push to see more or to, right. to have, to amplify that signal. So we are able to kind of tap into our ancestors or to, 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 um, people that were close to us or to your clients, loved ones. I think it's a, it's a good thing, a double-edged sword because it can either yes, serve absolutely. us in, in a, in a positive way or, or be our worst, our worst enemy when it comes to being able to kind of see. Um, now, I, 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 I have an interesting question for me because I, when, I, when I go see intuitive, I don't, I, don't go to, I don't go to an intuitive to ask them um, about how my grandparents are doing or that, that have passed on or, or a friend. That's that lottery numbers. On. Right, where the lottery numbers. I kind of, <laughs> kind of get it, you know, kind of intuitive, intuitive counseling. Um, and they use the, the energy, that's the, the the knowledge and the wisdom from my ancestors to kind of create a, a, a um, to get advice, to, to kind sure. of get some wisdom. But so how does it, so how does that work with your, I mean, your clients, I'm sure you have some clients that just want to hear about, you know, uncle AB and, and if he's, you know, if he's up to something <laughs> beyond the bed. They, uh, for me, uh, I'm able to uh, talk to my spirit guides. Uh, I have, uh, different spirit guides than uh, a lot from what I've seen. Uh, my spirit guides are archangels. Uh, the reason I have them is because I have an ability to see spirit. I see them 24 seven. The only time I don't see them is when I'm sleeping and I have to take a lot of medicine to do that. Cause if I don't, they will wake me up in the middle of the night. Uh, oh, so, uh, just, know. just a little while ago before I was uh, doing this interview with you, I was actually taking a nap for a little bit and something woke me up. And when I woke up, there was a little boy standing here with a, with a, uh, with a teddy bear in his arms. And I was like, whoa. And then he looked, he saw me and disappeared. And then when I closed my eyes, then I could see him again, but I saw another man standing there mm. with him holding his hand. And the little boy was look, looking around him, hiding, hiding from me because he knew I could see him. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, yeah, I see them all the time, but I'm able to see my spirit guides as well. Uh, and I have them because my main gift uh, they gave me is I cross spirit over into the light. Uh, and I don't get paid for that. I just do it because that's what they want me to do. Mm -hmm. um, but because I can ask them questions to help spirit cross over into the light, I'm, I can ask them any question. And mm -hmm. I, so that's what I asked them in the very beginning. Can I ask questions for other people? And they said, yes. So, so people come to me. Uh, most of them come. Uh, I tell them how it works. And they, they are. Uh, the way it works for me is you come to me and you ask me direct questions that mm. pertain to you and your life. I can get information about your, uh, your mom and dad. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand, there's some, uh, as, as we were, you were saying earlier, there are some mediums out there who claim to be, uh, 
they claim that they can get lots of answers from your mom and dad. And that's not all necessarily the truth. Because- and that's not exactly how it works. Right. Because in, 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 stop me if I'm wrong from it, it, the, 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 if our loved ones come through, it's, it's the energy of them. <clears throat> yeah. They're not in form anymore. They're not wearing their suit. You know, they, they're not, a, they're not a hologram. They're, they're an energy. And, right. You know, like for, for when I, cause I, I speak to my grandfather all the time and, um, yes, you do. Yes. Yes. Stop it. I'm being, I'm being told. I you. forgot who I'm talking to right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting because, y- you know, you can ask him questions and he's not going to like understand a lot of like the world of the form anymore. He's free. He's like, right. He's, he's free. free. The pain, the anger, the sorrow, the grief, the guilt, the anguish and all that. They don't think in those terms anymore. No, they, they don't have to. They let it go. In order to cross over, you have to let it go. Or you, it's a karmic lesson. You come back. I don't know you know, if you believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You come back to fulfill a purpose. But, but my, it's interesting because, um, my, my grandfather, um, you know, he, he, he discovered spirituality. He never talked about it, but he, he was, you know, he, he was raised with, with abusive grand. My grandfather was, my great grandfather was abusive. You know, he was an immigrant from the old country and my, my father, basically, my grandfather basically ran away at age 14 and, and joined the, the service and lied about his age. This is, you know, he was born in 1907. So it's interesting, like communicating with him beyond the veil. It's like all the nuggets, all the, the, the things I loved about him, his own wisdom that he shared with him as a little kid. It's so simple. There's no... There's no noise. There's no like no. There's no editorializing. There's no like, um, the, and, and there's no motive or agenda. It's pure. And it's like, it's wonderful. Um, and we are the ones who create that noise. We don't have to live within the noise either, but a lot of people just choose to. That's all. Because it's, think, all ever, it's all they'd ever known. Right. It's, it's like, um, <laughs> I think we, uh, you know, we modulate, we, we, we vacillate up and down in the noise and, you know, it's kind of like thought turbulence. We're in and out. And, and I think as we get older, we can either be completely caught up in the noise and, and, and completely blocked up, or we, we allow ourselves to be in and out because that's kind of the nature of the human experience. Um, yes. So, so a client comes to you and you can you can all automatically see you can just feel that there's a lot of there's a lot of multi path distortion going on. There's a lot of yeah. noise. I get um, it right away as soon as they come up. As soon as they make the intention to actually have a reading with me, it comes that fast. So 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 a client comes to you and, and um, you know a lot of I'm sure a lot of the audience has as or some of the audience has, has been to intuitives and again they're you know Daniel's special. There are not a lot of people like there's only one Daniel. Don't get a don't get a swelled head. It's good to have an ego. It's a healthy <laughs> ego, right? Yeah, it's a, yeah. Sure. The illusion right. called ego, right? I, I get to help people. So Daniel's okay. Daniel's head's getting is getting. He's he's. I can see it's. That's why know. I cut off my hair so you can see the growth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to send me a picture of you and back in the day. Um, the I, I want, when, you when you won't you were, won't recognize me. Really? Yeah. yeah big big hair. Big yeah. hair band. Yeah, I, I was a big guy too. I weighed like 350 pounds, and yeah, I had more chins than a Chinese phone book. I was huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great metaphor. Yeah, I'll but send you a picture. I would love to see that. You know, you were you probably look like you're in Quiet Riot or like. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> like what's decent? Like uh, yeah, um, and yeah. D. Snyder, D. In front of you, and we're getting on a tangent. D. Snyder still has that hair. That's probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got rid of that when I was in my 30s. So. Well, yeah. you look very, you look very smart and uh-uh. erudite. Uh, I, I don't work on this, but this is how it happened. So <laughs> I'm knocking on, I'm knocking on wood right now. It, it so, so, they, so, so unlike a lot of intuitives, you know, Daniel, Daniel is, you know, he's got like this toolkit, you know, and he's able to kind of pull out tools. He's got his spirit guides that are kind of facilitators. I would say, yes. right. Yes. Like there's triage, right. And you have, and, and, the, and tell me, it's something if I'm completely off base, but I would say like Archangel Michael, um, you know, the big hitters. Um, yes. You can share All that. The- They're the ones that are kind of like 
when you when you go to a hospital and, or or you know an ER or you go to a doctor's office, there's like triage where you you get the initial uh, intake and then and then you go to the nurse and they take more they have more questions for you and they write a lot of stuff down and then you wait in the waiting room and then you go to to see you know the the doctor. So so would you is that kind of what the spirit guides do? Yeah, absolutely because. Uh... Uh, I had someone ask me a question today uh, mm. about uh, 20 minutes ago before we got on. And uh, when she asked me a question about a certain type of business she was going to try to get into, uh, she wanted to get a website going for writing. And uh, I I got an answer. I said, no. Uh, and when I get that answer, it feels like a tear's running down my face. And then she said, well, you know, I thought about the, I had this opportunity to go in to uh, get a contract. And as soon as she said that, I got boop, right in the middle of my forehead. And that was a yes. And I know exactly who does that one. And that one right there is the big J, I call him, uh, Jesus. Uh, so, and when he answers me for something, it's for something that you are getting, needing an answer for, for something that's inspirational. Uh, and this is, so he- Like that's Christ he, consciousness kind of stuff. Yeah. He came in and said, that's, that's what she should do. She should go with this contract in writing and, instead of doing this uh, webpage with somebody else. And I said, mm. okay, so I told him. So I told her and she was like, yeah, I feel I feel more on that side of it. I said, well, if you're feeling that side of it, that's your spirit guides connecting with you, telling you, yes, this is what you should do. So follow through with that. I've been talking to her for like like three or four months about that. But uh, and she gives me writing tips, which is cool. But uh, so it's a little back and forth. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, but uh, yeah, the, well, I, I get a regular yes and no answers. For some things, but when when there's a heavy hitter that needs to come in for someone, then I get a particular one. Uh, usually, like when women are asking me questions, I have this one guy that touches the top of my head. It feels like a, a hand is rubbing my hair on my head. I feel it in my scalp. Oh, and uh, and uh, whenever uh, I get a, I need answers for that, she this woman, her name is Helen. She comes in and gives me answers. And then when she touches me here, after she touches me here to let me know that she's the one is answering, then every time I get a yes answer that goes across my eyebrow, it's her giving me that yes answer. I would think a woman like Helen, it's a strong name, would be giving you some pretty strong answers. My grandmother was named Helen. Oh, she, really? We called her the big guns, big Hungarian woman. <laughs> and yeah, she was the most kind, loving person, but you wouldn't, you don't mess, you wouldn't, you don't, still don't mess with her because, um, you know, she'd give you a look. Like, uh, yeah, she, this one gives me a look. I get to see her once in a while. Uh, I know that she was, she was actually someone because most angels don't walk the earth. Uh, they've been alive for billions of years. And, uh, but this one was an Egyptian princess and she shows herself to me whenever I see her in a dark room, I see her eyes or, but I don't see the rest of her face. She wears this mask. It's a jeweled mask. And I see all these shining diamonds and all that on her. But, uh, yeah, very beautiful. I envision a book in your future. I see it's coming together, my friend. You have a lot to, uh, well, a lot I, to found share. Out, I found out that through them as well. I didn't ever think of writing a book, but they show me when I go into my meditation, they bring up little messages for me. And sometimes I show up in video form, like little cartoons and I watch them. And they showed me of a cartoon of a man with a beard, uh, pulling out these scrolls and then writing on the scrolls. And I said, I said, I said to them, I'm talking to them uh, verbally in it because I can, I'm able to do that. And I said, uh, so it looks like he's writing something. And I said, yeah. And I said, like he's writing a book? Yeah. I said, do you want me to write a book? And then I just got, yes, 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 all over my face. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it it was know. like in spiritual <clears throat> spiritual uh, pink neon, right? It's just like. Yeah. It's just know, like. Write the book, damn it. <laughs> yeah, write the book. You're supposed to be writing a book. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the book is that I'm writing is basically telling a story of how I became this. But at the end of it, there's going to be a big message of, of what spirit wants people to do. Uh, mm. And that's, that's what I'm, I mean, I, I do readings for people and I try to give them some peace of mind, some clarity. Uh, but uh, that's not my main purpose or main reason for mm. being here. My main reason is to teach people to, to let them know why we are actually here and what our purpose is and where we're supposed to, where, what we're supposed to do next and how do we take care of each other. And I think that's, um, it's kind of like a Venn diagram with, with, you know, you go to a therapist and, and they're kind of a sounding board, you know, they're, they're, yes. they're, they're, they're creating uh, a mirror for you to, so you can kind of, kind of hear and kind of reflect on, on, um, what's, what's currently, um, 
what, what you want to move through, what, mm-hmm. what, what you want to get more clarity on in, in your own life. And it's kind of really good intuitives like yourself are that sounding board. And the most brilliant part of it is that you're not only a sounding board in this present moment, but you have this <laughs> incredible gift where you are able to kind of get the wisdom from a source that's so clear and, and so it, 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 it's, it's, it's on, it's on, um, cluttered. It, it's, it's not contaminated by thought or by ego or by, or by, Absolutely. um, you know, motive. And, and I think that's what, why a, an intuitive like you, who's a brilliant intuitive is, is so powerful because even a therapist, a therapist or, or, or a psychologist, or even a coach like myself, we're still colored by the thing called thought. We have, right. you know, when, when we, and again, clarify or stop me if I'm wrong. And I, what I think is, is like when we, when we, I'm under, yeah, <laughs> when we, when we move on to the, when we move no, on, when we pass on, um, that whole, the whole, the whole mechanism of thought of, of our, of this machine is this, this computer between our ears. It's complete. It's gone. It's silenced. Yes. It, 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 we're not contaminated, you know, for better or for worse. The, our brain is not interfering with, with intuition. So that's why you're so powerful as a, as an intuitive and as a guide for, for, for people that are looking for some uncontaminated wisdom beyond the veil, because our greatest teachers are not here with us in the present. Maybe no, we had a social studies teacher in, in, in high school that you still remember that was kind to you and was a brilliant teacher. However, I think the greatest teachers are when we get really present and quiet and we, we listen. Because and that's what we need to do. Yeah. Listen, because we, people get messages all the time, but they don't listen. And you not only need to listen, but you need to follow through. And that's what people tend to not do. And the, the reason they do that is because they let their egos get in the way of it. That's and right. They, they change their minds or they talk or ADHD. About it. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. In my, ca- in my case, you know, it's, it's like I can, I would love just to spend one day without ADHD and just, I, I don't know. I'm at the, you know, ADHD is a gift though. So there's a lot of great things about it. But um, when it comes to like, I was talking to a friend who's also an intuitive um, and a sound healer who we shared space um, office space uh, six or seven years ago here in Santa Barbara. Um, and he, he shared with me um, an experience with a client that maybe you probably may have had this a similar kind of experience or maybe not um, <clears throat> where he had a client who he tapped into the client. He, he, he channeled the client's um, father who passed many, many, many decades ago. And he was actually having a, an argument. It was, the, the, the father was combative with, with um, my, my friend who was you know, gifted in, in, in a similar way as you are. Um, and he couldn't, he couldn't continue with the session because it was so tiring. And, 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 and the, the, the man who passed on, who was this woman's father, was so abrasive and so awful. Um, is that really, tr- I mean, does that really happen or, or is that <clears throat> happened somewhere else and it wasn't really her father? It was just oh, no, he tapped another into entity. It, but the, 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 the spirit that he had tapped into uh, was one that did not cross over into the light. Mm. Uh, and anytime you find a, a spirit that is combative or is argumentative or is talking about things that are like uh, still in the negative, wor- negative mm. world, they are ones who are remained here as an earthbound spirit. Mm. Uh, because when, in order to cross over into the light, you have to be able to let go of all your pain, anger, sorrow, grief, guilt, and all that stuff. And if you choose not to, again, it's your choice whether or not you want to go into the light. And if you choose not to let go of that stuff, then you will just remain here as an earthbound spirit. The disadvantages of that is when you cross over into that realm of it, uh, whatever age that it was that you died is the age that you will remain in that realm. If you cross over into the light and you are 79 years old, anyone who dies over the age of 30 goes back to being 30. Anyone who dies under the age of 30 will grow up in heaven to be 30. 30 is a prime age. It's when we feel our best, and that's when you look your best. But, yeah, there's other ones. If you if you die at 79, you, you don't have a lot of, like, you, you, don't, you don't break bones or anything like that uh, because they're pure energy at that point. But. Uh, you still feel like you're 79. You still feel like you're all crooked up and everything. So it's not easy for you to get around. So, so, and, and that's really interesting. And, and I love what you said about like, so, so what, 
If, if we die did, at 79 and, and we pass, we, we move into the light, we take on the age when we, we died, right? Or do they no, you will, you will go back to being 30 them. years old. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so even if your parents come through or when your grandfather is coming through to talk to you and you see him, what he's doing is he's projecting himself of the last memory that you had of him. So what, that's what he looks like. But what he actually looks like is a 30 year old man when, when he's there. And my, my grandfather was a handsome devil. He was, yeah. he, he was a handsome dude. Like he called him, they called him handsome until his, until his, until, until his seventies, until he died at 80. Um, but apparently he passed it on. Oh, come on. My nose is too big. <laughs> my nose is too big. And, no, and no, um, no, no. well, thank you. He, um, um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, but, but I, I think that it, 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 let me, let me go back to that again. Cause I, I completely forgot what I was saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had an ADHD moment, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and, and I, I think that, that for some clients that come to see you, if their family member is belligerent, it must be tough for them. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what do you usually, how do you, what usually, um, what do you usually tell them if they're, if the, if um, the spirit is, you know, not wanting to be there or um, is combative? Uh, how I do you soften them, the blow and how do you, uh, especially well, if they're grieving? I, I give them options uh, because what I'm able to do, because I cross spirit over, uh, I tell them um, first that they ask me about a particular uh, relative. I will find out first. I'll ask my guys <clears throat> if they've crossed over or not. If they haven't, then I can tell them. At that point, uh, I will give them an option. They can give me the full name of that person and his mm. birthday. And then what I can do when I get home, <clears throat> I can call that particular person out and ask them if they would like to cross over. And then I will have a conversation with them and I'll let them know that, you know, because a lot of them, they don't even know what year it is. Uh, I did a reading for a girl uh, one time and she was looking to get a hold of her sister and her sister uh, was around, but uh uh, I said her sister was not crossed over. She had remained here. So let me try to contact her. And when I did, her sister was trying to give her information. They they think they have unfinished business sometimes, but there is no such thing as un- if you don't finish it, you're just not meant to. That's all. Let it go and cross into the light. Uh, but she was trying to let her sister know that she had been cheating on her sister's boyfriend with her boy- boyfriend wh- while she was alive, you know. So uh, really, so, yeah. So uh, it's like the Jerry Springer show across the veil. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, wow. Why would, but why, why would why would she? But why would I wonder? Because it bothered her because she she wanted to tell her sister she was sorry for that. Uh, mm. So uh, and that's so why she, she hasn't crossed over yet because she hasn't. Made right. Her Ab- absolutely. Oh, I so see. when I talked to her, I said, "Well, uh, you you need to let, let this go and cross over." She says, "Well, I only died two days ago." And I said, no, you didn't. You died 20 years ago. Oh, wow. They don't realize that. They don't have a concept of time. I mean, it, it's, no, it's, no, no space and time. Yes. And so uh, I told her, I said, you need to let it go. You need to cross over. I got her to cross over. But when I spoke to the, the, uh, the sister who was still living, I said, yeah, your sister told me that. She said that uh, you, uh, she was cheating on your boyfriend with you. And her boyfriend had passed away as well. And she said, uh, she said oh, I already know that. She said, I've let that go already. It's no big deal. It was just a, it was, we were teenagers, you know, so it didn't, didn't bother me that much. So, and, and it's funny because it is kind of like, it's like but that, spring. that right there gave me a, a, a proof of what I, what I did because mm. uh, how would I know that her sister was cheating on her, her boyfriend with her without actually being able to have this gift. So it, it gave me some, uh, what did they call that? Cl- some clarity on that saying, yes, I actually uh, am who I am, who I say I am. Cause I found out your sister was cheating on your boyfriend. So uh, yeah. I mean, it's girl. really interesting, you know, and I love what you said there that, you know, you, you are the real deal. Um, we all know if we go to an intuitive, if we're grieving, you know, if we have a lot of noise going on between our ears, there's a lot of noise in our brain you know, we're, we're dealing with a, a loss or, 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 you know, some, some terrible circumstances in our outside world that are, are colluding our ability to get present. Um, it's hard to, to, <clears throat> we want, we want some, some validation about 
Yes. That, that the person that has crossed over, they're okay. Yes. And they're more than okay. They're like, the they they've ever been the, ever. They're going, they're going back home if they've crossed yeah. over into the light. Yeah. Not that's hanging not out this at, this yeah. isn't home. Yeah. They've, they've, they're, they're rounding the bases. They're, they've, they've gone home. You know, yeah. they're, they're the, yeah. yeah, they're, um, they're, they're like the, what was, what year was it? What was the band year for the Yankees? Was it recent? No. All of, of them. Band, all of them. <laughs> the Red Sox. It's like the Red Sox when they broke the curse, the great Bambino. Right. Like that's kind of like when they, that's kind of like passing on through the light when they've made amends and they've let go of the, of, of the guilt or, or they've, um, uh, admitted their 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 f- failings in their their you know their forgiveness and all that stuff. Then they cross over. Um, I'm really curious about um, your hard your your difficult clients mm-hmm. um, and and how that because you're still you know you, you know besides your gift you're still a human being you know you still yeah. have this 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 meat suit on you still have a brain that yeah. you're working with you so you're still living a human experience as an intuitive and medium and as a, as a psychic, how does, so if you have a difficult client comes in and, you know, they're well-meaning and you could see that they're well-meaning beyond the, the noise. If, if they trigger you in some way, how does that, like, how, how do you mitigate that in, in or what is, what is it like to be an intuitive and also a human being that has frailties like we all do. And then you have a client that comes in that's, you know, it's diff- going through some difficult stuff. And it's just a difficult client for better or for worse um, and are difficult to work with. Um, how do you kind of keep the signal strong? You know, we talked about multipath distortion. When, when your brain and your ego kind of sometimes get the best of you, like we all do when you're doing a, um, a reading. And that's a... Um. It wasn't very, it wasn't easy in the very beginning, <clears throat> but uh, you have to learn to be the, the other side of that conversation. You have to learn to be the strong side of that conversation with that mm. person. Uh, because uh, whenever I do a reading, whenever we do, we go out and we're doing festivals again, that's coming up soon. Oh, wow. I have one, like a week to do. Uh, uh, one of the, well, tell, tell the audience where you're going to be. Um, it's, That's it's okay. here in Delaware. Um, uh, you know, I don't even, they, they, they could go to my website for that and they could check my website. Uh, well, well, um, I, you'll share all I, that at the end. You'll, yeah. I mean, yeah. But, uh, just doing that, you know, you, you have to be that strong person because, uh, one of the tools that I always bring with me when I go do readings is uh, a box of tissues. Uh, because that always happens because people are, all, they always, once they get an answer that they know is true, uh, then they they break down a little more and they become very trusting and then everything else pours out after that. Uh, that and that's the one thing they uh, they have to have a little bit of clarity on as is is some truthfulness coming through because I always tell people you may not get the reading that you want, but you will get the reading that you need. Mm. Um, the the best story, uh, one, a hard one was spirit tends to also, when I'm trying to uh, bring them a message, spirit will put certain uh, feelings into me too that are, uh, I've I've broken out and cried in the middle of a uh, a reading because they want me they bring they put these emotions in me so it will express the message that needs to be brought to this person mm-hmm. as well so they they do that they're very powerful with me. Uh, one of the, I'll tell you a crazy story. So uh, this Please. is my f- favorite story ever. Uh, it was such an emotional thing for them and for me. Uh, and I had this, I was at a, uh, this place. Uh, we were doing this festival called Illuminate Festivals. <clears throat> you can look that up online, uh, illuminatefestivals.com. And I was over in Annapolis, Maryland. And this couple kept walking past my table and they're checking things out because there's a lot of us around. There was four readers there that day. And they kept coming by. And then I would just talk to them a little bit. And I said, well, you know, just come back if you're ready. And they did. They came back an hour later and they sat down with me. And I, I like the in-person ones best because that's when I get most of my information. <clears throat> and I, I sit across from them and I said, okay, let me hold your hand. Because when I do that, I connect with them. I said, I want to see who's here with you. And I held their hand. 
And I closed my eyes and then boom, and I saw it. And I said, uh, okay, I said, you have a horse here with you. And the horse is like a brown and white horse, kind of like a cow would look, a brown and white horse. And I said, it was, it's a small horse, not a very tall one. I said, but this horse you have here doesn't have a regular horse's mane. It has a, it looks like a wig that's sitting across the top of its head. Oh, wow. And they, and they look at me like, what do you mean? I said, yeah, what's with this horse? And she's like, I don't know what you're saying. So they were trying to try me a little bit, but I was okay with that. And I said, well, it's got oh, this- they were trying to like, they were trying to, they're, they're, they wanted to see if you're legit or not. Right. So, to, oh, the, wow. Oh, and it, but it came through. Hey, it's their dime. I said, this, it looks, I said, it looks like a wig is what it looks like. It just looks like a blonde wig. When I said blonde wig, the husband picked up his phone and started brushing through his phone, brushing mm. through his phone. And I said, she said, well, what else is going on? I said, well, the horse, uh, it shows me this barn and the stall and it, the door opens for the stall and the horse comes around, comes about and comes around to you and then takes his head and puts his head on your shoulder, on your right shoulder. He's doing it right now. He's putting his head on your right shoulder mm. and he's telling me that you are his mommy. And she just starts looking wow. at me. And, I, and all of a sudden, her husband stops his phone and goes, is this the horse right here? Oh, and wow. I said, I said, that's the horse. I said, what's with the wig? And he said, we had a portrait done of the horse. The, mm. the portrait cost us like $4,000. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the guy who painted the portrait. Wait, $4,000 for a horse portrait? For the portrait hey, of the Hey, to each his own. God bless. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not me. Not me. Hey, either. look, human beings, wow. <laughs> yeah, they, they will do anything. But uh, yeah, this, these people were, they love this horse, I guess. So uh, he shows, I said, well, what? He said, yeah, we got, the guy painted the picture, but he painted it in the way he wanted it. He depicted it. And we didn't like the picture so much that we have the picture back right now. It's in our home in the closet because we don't like the picture. Right. I was like, wow, did you try to get your money back? He's like, no, we couldn't do that. I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, well, the horse keeps showing me where it comes out of the stall, comes around and puts his head on your, on your shoulder there and keeps doing it and says, this is my mommy. This is my mommy. And they both looked at me and then they started, they, I could see the tears rolling in their eyes. And I said, what? And they said, our horse just died two weeks ago. Mm. And I said, well, why does it keep coming out of the stall and doing this? She said, every morning I would wake up, I'd go out to feed the horse. I'd walk out there. I'd open the stall door. The, the horse would come out of the stall, come out about, and then put his head on my shoulder oh, wow. every single day. And I looked at her and I said, I can't make this shit up. And they were just bawling their eyes out. And then from that point on, I mean, it was, when I do those readings, they're only 20 minutes long, and that take about took about 20 minutes. And then I think they asked maybe one or two more questions. But um, yeah, there were just people standing around watching this happening. And when I turned around to look, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And uh, and but from that point on, I was booked the rest of the day. Uh, and it's been that way ever since I've been doing those uh, those festivals. But uh, yeah, it, and that made me feel. I mean that was really validating it it kind of it kind of it it kind of you know you know we all get insecure about stuff you know this human experience and we have you know we could michael jordan when he was you know when he was at this prime still got still thought he sucked yeah right tiger woods i can go on and on and on and and it's just the nature of mind and of the brain and the interesting thing is um even as a gifted intuitive like you are you still have moments and I was actually talking to a friend, another friend. I, I love intuitive. I mean, I resonate with the big woo. And, and, and I love why well, I, I, I just maybe I have no idea why. I mean, because I'm, you know, I see beyond, you know, the, 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 the world of the, of the form. Because I'm, I'm just really, because the, the human experience is what is, it's not just a human experience. It's a spiritual experience right. within it. Um, <clears throat> we and, see beyond and, the fluff. Beyond the fluff. That should be that should be the, yeah. the title of uh, of yeah of uh, of your uh, next podcast yeah. on the fluff with Daniel Taylor. Yeah, no, Daniel yeah. Jackson. So I just said Daniel Taylor for some reason. I have no idea why. Who's that? Forgive me. I don't know. <laughs> do, 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 do. Anyways, um, I, I had a had a 
another friend I was talking to who is also pretty gifted. He's not on the same level as you are, but he says that sometimes when he's caught up, when he's in a bad mood or he's, you know, he's just in a low state of mind or, you know, his, the quality of his thinking is not there. He, he just can't do a session. Um, does that happen with you? Or is, is there any truth to that? Or, or is it just like he's still, because he's believing the story, his brain's spewing out and he's caught up in the story. <clears throat> and that's why he doesn't have a pure signal, you know, doesn't have a good signal with. with um, or, or is yeah, it never like I, that? I'm, I never, I'm never turned off. <clears throat> I'm always on. Uh, but I'm, I have, my, I have my regular days like anyone else. I, I get sick sometimes. Uh, it's hard to do. I did a reading for uh, a woman about a month ago, mm. and I was, I was deathly ill all morning. Uh, I was in the bathroom. It was coming out of both ends type of ill. Hey. But, uh, but I, I pushed through. But what happens uh, for me is when I, when I get in that mode of they start asking me questions and I'm asking and I'm getting answers. Uh, the energy just comes through and it, I was fine, perfectly fine all the way until the very end of that. And then I, I, I was okay after that, that energy brought me, uh, brought me through, uh, being ill and made me feel better. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I have, uh, but whenever, um, I'm about to do a reading, uh, I try to at least sit for 10 or 15 minutes and just, uh, have some silence and uh, prepare myself for it because every reading I've ever done, they're never the same. They're all different. Uh, but uh, uh, I've never had, I've never been so blocked. Uh, I'm in, I'm uh, in communication with them 24 uh, seven. I can wake up in the morning and uh, I'm asked a question and they answer that quickly. So yeah, uh, like the red phone. The yeah. Yeah. Uh, the sure. bat, yeah, on the bat phone, right? You're the bat yeah. phone. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Never turns off. Never. I, uh, I've, been driving down the road before and I would just I was think I was thinking to myself and when I did I got an answer and I was like oh wait I wasn't even asking you guys a question and then and then I heard in my mind you're never alone and I was like oh okay and I I literally hear that hear a voice but the the uh the thoughts in my in my mind are no longer mine that's part of my gift as well as mm. so you're able to see beyond the noise and, and you've kind oh, of absolutely it's kind of like I look at it like we, earlier uh, today's ladies and gentlemen, um, I had some technical difficulties with the mic and the preamp. <laughs> it's kind of that that's it's a great metaphor for some. Hey, stop it. <laughs> I, I'm still an amateur. I'm learning. Um, it was like <laughs> there was a pre I have a preamp and, and a, a pretty nice mic and a, a nice setup. And it, w it was kind of glitching and there's all this noise and, and harmonic, whatever it was. I don't know. It was just noise and, 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 and stuff. And or it's uh, our energy. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah, you never know. I have problems with electronics all the time. I do too. Yeah. I, I, and, 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 uh, and lights yeah. flickering all the time. And I thought it all was the, time. the house that I, the townhome that I have in this house is the townhome was built, was built in the twenties. And um, this is Shumash Indian land. And we can get, we can talk about that another time because it's fascinating. Um, but, but um, it's this, I think it's the same thing for some people um, is exactly what, what happened earlier when I couldn't get the mic to work properly and we were having all this um, distortion. Um, you know, intuitives are, are people too. You have, yes, you we know, are. And until we pa pass over into the next realm, we're still living this human experience of, of yes. thought and thinking. And, and you know, you, the reason <clears throat> why you're so gifted is because you see what thought and thinking really is. And, made up I've, it's, I've it's learned, illusory it's a it's a computer program that's been inserted into our, our brain it's I've learned conditioning and beliefs go. yeah yeah and that's yeah, what makes I've you such go. a powerful intuitive for sure yeah, I, I let it go i know uh uh i i yeah i'm a regular person just like everybody else you know i i like to go uh, ride my motorcycle when i can or you know i i don't have a lot of friends i hang out with anymore because every time i'm around people all they want to know is oh and I go to meet my soulmate. Oh my gosh! No, but but uh, <laughs> <laughs> tell them to call the Psychic Friends Psychic Friends Network. Yeah, go yeah. go to go talk Dion Warwick and her. Dion Warwick, right? Yeah, because uh, oh, yeah, that, or, yeah, yeah, one of those people. But uh, uh, yeah, that 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 part of it gets a little bit tiring. Uh, but I uh, uh, I I never ever not go anywhere where I don't uh, end up talking to somebody about it. Uh, but I, but that's that's part of it that I'm I'm uh, grateful for because I mm. enjoy doing that, you know. And 
I'm, I know I'm always help, get to help people, and sometimes it's just complete strangers. But but everybody who comes to me for a reading is usually a complete stranger. Uh, but uh, not really, because we're all connected mm. to each other. But uh, and uh, once we make that, once I make that connection with someone in a reading, <clears throat> I always tell them, you know, at this point, you know, we're friends now, and if you have a question, just get a hold of me and ask me. And I never charge them again after that unless they want a full reading. But if they just have one question that they have uh, some trouble with, I tell them to just get a hold of me and I'll answer it for you. And, and, um, because I, I think can. that's what, ma- I think that's what makes you so real and authentic and, and, and powerful as, as a, a conduit. I would say you're a conduit, a channeler, Absolutely. and, and also you're, you're a guide because, the, yes. and again, stop me if I'm wrong. If I'm, if I'm summarizing your, your, your gifts and your, what you offer to your clients is no, kind of like going, a coach does. Work for me. <laughs> okay. Just, uh, yeah. I'm growing. Your ego is getting. I can see your ego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Daniel's one of the most humble people I've ever met, and I think that's what makes him so gifted. And um, you know, you've had your own stuff walking on this planet, your own issues, oh, your boy. own traumas, and it leads me to another oh, question. Boy. I'm gonna ask you. I'm asking you a lot of questions. And no, you can ask. Me. I can shut up too. You're allowed to. No, <laughs> you're. you're... Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we're wearing the same color shirt. Um, yeah. Another example why Daniel is so powerful. No, he just has good taste in colors, man. That's what it is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love so that's what color. That's what the color of energy is. I see yep. blue. I see energy all day long. So, like, you look at your wall, Sam, and it's white in the background. Uh, I don't see that. My my regular vision is I actually see your white wall, but it's actually I see energy in it as well. Your wall looks blue and white to me. Huh. Interesting. I don't. Uh, I don't see the stars at night anymore. I haven't seen the stars in two and a half years. It went away. Now they're I overrated. See the you can go to the planetarium and see them. Yeah, the only thing I see at night time when I look in the sky is a blue black sky, and then I just see and people and energies and walking around and all that stuff. That's all I see anymore. Well, some stuff I I, I miss, but uh, but I know it's all for the for what I need to be because I need to be on mm. all the time. So and that's and that's your and that's your 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 kind of karmic uh, mission is is that yes you know you're born with very very. Um, sophisticated and um kind of powerful antenna you know like i think yes. like the, you remember the, the aerials on antennas on the roof on the roof yep. how do you say you say rough or roof uh roof okay <laughs> you, you say roof. you say but you say use how you's doing uh, uh use guys <laughs> and, and how you how you guys doing um, guys. And, and you say on i love that on. i used to say on yeah yeah that's that's the south jersey philly delaware Water. I drink water too. Water, yeah, yeah, water. <laughs> That's North Jersey too. Um, yeah. um, I always was c- curious about, and I've heard so many different um, perspectives on this. Do you think location and where you are living makes um, you a better conduit or not? In, in is it the area? Because you've had a very unique experience growing up in a, a, a very old house in an area of the country, which there was a lot of bloodshed. There was a lot of war. There was a lot of stuff happened. And, and in here in Santa Barbara, there was the Shumash. Um, I live here um, literally across from the beach in this whole area. There was the Shumash um, um, massacre when the Spaniards came over and they massacred a thousand Shumash Indians who were on this land for thousands, you know, for forever. Um, and, and so some people believe that, that this area where I live, there are ley lines and there's, they're, they're, they're uh, conduits for, for increased psychic activity. And also for folks like you and I, the signal might be a little bit stronger, just absolutely involuntary, you know, with, without, it's kind of like being closer to a radio tower. Um, the signal's better. Absolutely. Um, there, so, uh, Southern California, New Mexico. Yep. Especially absolutely. Ohio, California is a vortex. Yeah. I was just, I go there all the time just to, to, cause I have clients out there, but also because it's, I, I go hiking in, in you know, nature and I get that, you know, Good energy that way messages from my, 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 my grandfather and from, absolutely from, um, from spirit, from, um, my spirit guides and Archangel Michael, the whole crew, the all-star crew. Yeah. Michael touches me right here all the time. Does he, does any of your, any, any of your spirit guides slap you on the head? Like, you know, snap uh, oh, no, I, I, no, I, no, but I feel them touching me all the time. Uh, all, all different ones. I have uh, so many of them. It's it's hard to keep track. So so if you so if you so say is New Jersey um, and also another condo? Is it because of what has happened in in the in the in the colonies? You know, 
we're going back, you know. Oh, because of because, because of, of the uh, bloodshed. Is it, it? Are you trying to uh, make the the correlation between why I'm getting it and because of that? Well, in uh, general, like with 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 intuitives and, and mediums like yourself that you know that do this full time and, and and are on all the time, have you noticed a, um, a change in in, in, the, in the purity of the signal when you go go? travel with your wife or you visit family somewhere else is it does it change or is it always the same like, it's always the same mm. uh and i i will i can give you the reason why mm. uh uh if you choose to hear this uh <clears throat> uh my soul um um i don't i don't want i don't want to say this to uh to to brag or anything like that because it has no please brag Nothing, nothing to do with Yeah, no. Please, because uh, this in is the, it's in truth. the same way uh, that uh, there's only one God, there's only one Jesus, there's only one Daniel Jackson. Uh, and the reason being is because my soul uh, keeps coming, returning all the time, but not for the same reason that everyone else returns. Everyone else returns because they're here to, they haven't fulfilled their purpose. My soul continues to come back over and over and over again. My soul was actually in my grandfather before. It's it was old as shit. Sorry. Yeah, it's old as shit. A very so old. So is mine. My, Thank I've you been for better for us. <laughs> yeah, I've been here over twenty three thousand times. And the reason Groundhog Day. Back. Uh, yeah, not. absolutely. Because yeah. Uh, it was in my it was in my grandfather. Uh, my my grandfather wanted to know when I was going to be born, uh, and he told my mom and dad this. Why? Because he knew uh, what was what it was about. Because he had to get this well. And uh, so what happened is my dad called him up and said, hey, he's being born. You got to come to the hospital. And my grandfather got ready to come to the hospital and he had a heart attack and died. And what happened is is his soul left his body and then came into mine. And then I was born. Uh, And the reason being for that is, as my spirit guides have told me, the reason why spirit come to me for me to cross them over Mm -hmm. is because the light that shines into heaven has to be in within a physical body to be here to to show spirit all the time where that light is it has to be here all the time and uh sometimes that light has to do it physically like i have to do i have to cross them over physically so when i say that i am the light into heaven that's exactly what i mean i was born to be the light into heaven to show spirit how to cross over into heaven and i have to keep coming back over and over and over again to be here so that spirit can see that light. Because when you pass away, you you everyone gets a personal light. And when you pass away, you see that light and you either cross over. I hate that. Go. I hate that descriptor. I know. It's it's horrible. Because it's not because you're not pa- you're not passing away. You're you're moving on. <clears throat> you're going yeah, back you're to the place where you, you're going back to the place where you were where you right, started at. What the light is, I know, I, I, is I, I it's a guide mean. to show you where to go. So you know you go, you know you go into the light to go through that light and end up on the other side. Uh, and that, but that's what I am. So after you have your personal light, if you choose to go in, then you go in. If you choose not to, mm. you, you remain here and then that light turns off. But there is one light that continues that stays lit all the time. And it just happens to be, it's in my body this time. It was in my grandfather's before that. It skips generations. And I just found out recently, it's always the last child, a male child born in that family. Uh, is the one who gets it. And uh, my dad was also the last male child in his family, but he didn't get it. So it was the next generation. It gets skipped one and it came into me. Uh, so yeah, I'm the light that shines. And and that's why I see, I see spirit all the time, but they see me. And that's why I see so many. <clears throat> it's like being in a room with a thousand people, except nobody leaves and, and more people keep coming in. When I'm in a room, dark room, even a lit room, I, I look around. If I, stare into this dark tv for too long i don't like to do it i start seeing faces if i stare into your wall i can see uh well there's a woman right right behind yep. you yep uh, yep and her name is anita yeah. <clears throat> and i can there's a woman named anita that that was that died in 1976 i, I long, long hair yeah very uh pretty too yeah uh, but, Latin. Uh, yeah yeah absolutely and uh, very nice. But, uh, oh, yeah, she's uh, she's right on your uh, on your right shoulder. But uh, yeah, so if I stare into it, I, that's what I start seeing. So I see them everywhere. But if I close the lights out and it's dark in here, it's it's literally like I see just faces. I've had faces, that happen, too. Faces. 
And everywhere. initially it scared the hell out of me. This was yeah, sure, because she's, who are they? They're just everybody. That's who they are. <laughs> they're, just moving, they're just moving on through, man. They're That's just, all they are doing. They're moving and, around. And, and especially um, in my town, home, there's a, the hallway is on a, supposedly is on a ley line. Um, have you heard the, the term ley line? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it's, again, take what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, take that with a, a grain of salt, you know. No, nope, take it believe, as truth. Because it take is, it as truth. It's a spiritual truth. Telling me, yes, it's, and, it's and, truth. But before, before I, I share that, I, I just want to tell you, it's not being, it's not bragging. It's, it's truth. And how, you yeah, know, to put, it, to put this it's into it's words, to put what you're experiencing into words is, is, is tough. It, it, yeah. it's, it, because it can, for people that have certain conditioning on board that are really kind of living in, in this, you know, matrix, uh, this, the, 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 the physical world, but they're actually caught up in, in the matrix. Um, and they don't, and, and they just don't choose to see beyond what they see with their two eyes and what they yeah. process with their brain. Um, you, you're, you're actually, those are perfect descriptors for what and who you are. Um, and, and it's, dangerous. It, it's what it could be dangerous at times because it, for, it'd be like for, for me, if I was, uh, uh, like, a, like a gay person coming out, I'm coming out telling people, this is who I am. And there may be many people out there who are going to disagree with that and who are, going, are not going to be appreciative of what I've said. Oh, you can't be that. You can't be that. Right. You're, oh, you're, you're, you're lying. And then they could, people get angry over these types of things, but yeah. It's just who I am. I can't help who I am. I just, I'm just me. That's, and and just, you know what, you know what you say to that, to those people or, or how you kind of navigate through that is, you know, you find your tribe and, yeah, and just like, even if you, even if you were just Joe Schmo, you know, Joe Schmo even, you know, has the ability to tap in. Yeah, um, absolutely. But, Joe, but, but it doesn't really matter. We find our tribe if we they allow ourselves to. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people just choose not to. They they don't want to open their eyes or open their hearts up to anything, and that, that's that's a sad thing because we could we could be a better. This could be a better place. Uh, we could treat each other better in this world if we chose to open ourselves up to that way. We could we we all live on the same planet. No one's going anywhere anytime soon, so we better start to get along with each other before. Unless you're Richard Branson, he went out yeah. to space for a little while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, or uh, Jeff Bezos, but but even know. so. Even so, the co- the heavens and the cosmos, it's all the same. It's all the same thing, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's it's all the same thing. And they need uh, to they need to put their billions of dollars back into the planet and stop worrying about trying to go to another one. We have a good one here. We need to take care of it. I agree. But that's a that's a that's for next the next our next conversation. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. part two, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's part two. I, I I'm <clears throat> curious about when you know going back to to where we live and, and how that can either amplify or strengthen our oh, gifts absolutely. There's, there's, or not. So more, like, for instance, when I go to Florida for some reason, yeah, the energy feels denser and, and it, the signal's yeah. not as good. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, you know, a cell phone signal. It's because of, maybe it's a peninsula or, you know, because of the political situation. I don't know. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, I'm not kidding, but, but I am kidding. I know. No, I'm so, kidding. Not kidding. Right. No, I'm but, with you. But but if I but if I go to Ohio, and I'm driving on on there's this road that's Daniel you would fall in love with it's gorgeous these canyons and they're, they're pink mountains. they're called the pink mountains and it just you feel like you're who you really are yeah the the the, the distortion and and the um, wow and flutter between your ears gets really calm even if you're you know having stuff going on in your life that is not particularly great. In our outside world, you can go to a place like that, or Sedona, or even yeah, um, yeah. So, so even that with me saying I'm always on, yeah, I'm always that's just, but that's just me. But are there are places in the world that are just high? Have, you, have there any places that you like to, you know, like that you've been to that have been helpful and and um, uh, in down in uh, I re- I rode my bike one time from here to Tennessee, and when I got to Tennessee, I felt really good. I was mm. in the mountains of Tennessee. Interesting. Yeah. That's the, um, that's not the, um, Appalachia, the, um, yeah, I went to, there's a, there's a, a, a road down there we want to go to. It's called the tail of the dragon. Tail of the dragon. That's a great yeah. driving course. Uh, yeah. I always wanted to I drive it I, I had a great time on it, but yeah, when I was there, I just, I felt really good. Uh, 
But I was not aware of the at that time when I was down there that I was this. I didn't find out I was a medium until five years ago. Uh, but I, I've always seen spirit my entire life. I just didn't know why. But now I know why. But uh, but yeah, there 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 have been times I've been different places that I've I felt better. Um, but uh, and yeah, there's there's places that like that, especially out where you are in California, New Mexico, Arizona. Um, such high energy places. I and I hear stories of. I know people who I've uh, who I have done readings for who mm. uh, have asked, "Hey, I, I want to move somewhere. Where do I need to go?" And uh, I've already sent uh, one person to uh, New Mexico, and I have two other friends that I, I did a reading for. They're going to be moving to Arizona soon. So uh, because uh, Spirit told me to tell them that. So and that's where they're going. Uh, so some people listen. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, there's some places out there you can go. Uh, and if you're having these experiences, more power to you. I'm I'm happy for you. I wish I could go out mm-hmm. there and do that as well. But I know I had I know I need to be here for a little while longer. But eventually we'll be out there. So and and, and we hope you you are here a lot longer. Yeah. Um, yes. And 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 I got 24 years. 24 years. That's it. Yeah. 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 But I've already asked when how long I'm got I've got left here. They told me that. Uh, I know exactly. Uh, I will be here. Um, uh, my birthday is in November. I'm not going to make it to that. So I will, I have 24 more years left. I'll be 78 when I pass away. We better have more conversations then because I, <clears throat> yeah. I'm not sure that I, I, it's the one thing I'm not agreeing with you on. Um, I don't get that, but I can, you're, 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 you're the, you're the expert on you and, and oh, that's, that's okay. I, don't know. I know where I'm going. <laughs> No, we're all going. going. We're all exactly. You, you know the interesting thing is, um, and I don't know, what is your? What do you think? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Death and taxes, right? But we're but uh, hmm? we are friends there as well. Even better friends because we don't. Yeah, have, we're just uh, meeting up. Here we don't have all the 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 distortions all the crap. of all the, all the crap, all the bullshit of yeah. thought and thinking. Um, Everybody's wearing a blue shirt. <laughs> we have a blue dot and it's in a blue dot, the blue, blue dot, dot of well-being. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, there's a wonderful, there's a, um, an author, her name is Anita Morjani. Have you heard of her? She wrote a book called dying to live where she had this wow. um, near death experience. And I, I, if you haven't read it, Daniel, um, if you have time, it's hard to make time. Yeah, for the reading. audio version. I'm not a reader. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I have a, the attention span of a lab rat. So squirrels. No, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, but, but it's worth the, you know, go on audible and read it. And she's, she's a real deal too. And, and she grew up in a society in, in India where women weren't allowed to make their own decisions and no. weren't allowed to be independent. And it's the caste system. It's, no. it's gotten a little bit better as the society there has been more democratized. But but it's a definitely wonderful read because she she had to die in order to see her true nature. She had to die mm. to see that there's nothing to be scared of. That that you know the experience of of passing on and moving on to the to the you know crossing over whatever you want to call it, going home sliding you know sliding into home from third base whatever um, is is the most wonderful experience you could ever imagine and the, in the, the greatest experience you could ever imagine experiencing as a, as a conscious being in this physical body. And then you don't have to deal with all the physical bullshit anymore um, or pay taxes. <laughs> yeah. That's the There's no IRS in heaven, but, uh, but, <laughs> my goodness. but, but, and, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll stop talking because I want, I want to, no, but, but um, she, she, she realized that that you know the the fear mongering and and, and all that stuff is Absolutely. all made up yep. because on the, in the world of form there's this thing called the ego and control <clears throat> we bond we see that that whole none of that means anything and none of it. you We're saw all like same. her true nature that you know we are infinitely expansive as an energy and we're all connected and I can go into the woo woo collective stuff and yeah, we're all equal. She, she got to see what really goes on and she got to come back and try to tell other people. And that's what she's doing. It, this is how it really is. Yeah. And that's what I, she was I, on I, Wayne Dyer. I didn't have to make that journey. They just tell it to me and I go out and tell people. Isn't that great? You didn't have to yeah. go through all that, you know, being in the yeah. hospital with cancer. God, God forbid. But, but, um, 
it, it was br- it was brilliant because for a woman grew up who grew up in a culture that she wasn't allowed to really have a an independent voice for her to write a book like this and go against her traditions and 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 her conditioning and her her family's belief systems that have been basically you know forced on her for oh, better or for worse it's all made up and by people, yeah, by people. By people. Yeah. yeah 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 so i have so many questions here but we we don't have all i wish we could spend hours but we don't because um uh well, you'll be on again, and, and because there's always part two and three and four and five. It's ne- it's never ending. Um, that's right. It's the never ending spiritual collective. <laughs> the what? The theories. The series. <laughs> the series. Right. That's right. It's much better than Ripley's, believe it or not. Um, you you mentioned in and and when I was um, on your podcast that you know you've health wise um, you know diabetes has has been an issue and for a lot of people. How does that, again, being that we're this body with a, a, a it's a machine and, and we're, we're both spiritual, we're both form and formless, how does the diabetes um, play a role in, in, in you being able to, you know, is it, is it amplified things? Is it, is it, do you have your moments? I mean, how does that work? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I have an issue. I have to go to an eye doctor every like nine weeks, uh, check out my eyes because mm. of diabetes. Uh, I have little capillaries that grow in the back of my eyes mm. and they will cause That's little true. blood, uh, uh, explosions in my eyes. Sometimes you, people call them floaters and I get them. Mm. I have one in my eye right now. It was actually pretty bad a couple of days ago to the point where it was blocking my vision. Uh, what do you learn through that? Patience. Cause Sometimes that they what they, the blood will actually do is well it'll seep back into my eye back into my system, but sometimes I have to wait a few days for that to happen. Uh, and those days were you born with diabetes or was this a, a later no on? Uh, type two diabetes? Uh, oh, well, I guess you could say I was, but I don't know. I didn't have it until I was thirty four. Mm. Uh, my dad had it. Uh, my but brother, you're only thirty seven, so that's you know. Yeah. <laughs> I wish, man. You're, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, make me feel so young, but uh, no, I got miles on me. Uh, 54, but uh, yeah, uh, my oldest brother or my middle brother, he has it now. He just found out about it. Uh, mm. And uh, I mean, I, I keep trying to tell him, you know, I'm a perfect example. I'm a living example for him to, hey, you need to get yourself on track. And mm. I, I have myself on track. Uh, um, I have my, my sugars are only like 102, 112, something like that. But I go out and ride a bicycle every night. Uh, when I get done this interview, I'll go mm. ride my bicycle. Well, but I, I have to take care of myself because yeah. I have a job to do. God gave me a job to do. And this is to go out and teach people why we're here, what our purpose is, and to do readings for people and help them get some, some uh, peace of mind and clarity. And in order to do that, I have to be able to do that. So enabled to be able to do that, I have to keep myself healthy. So you have to bounce but, out the, the, the machine of your body <clears throat> and, and, you know, um, keep it because I've heard stories that people that have, you know, chronic illnesses or, or whatever it is, they yeah. actually actually works in their benefit because they, have yeah. bit, because they're more patient and they're able to yes. calm down more and able to get more centered and grounded. It makes it, it makes uh, your gifts more uh, readily accessible for you. I would say. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Spirit has asked me to do a couple other things that they don't want me to do. Uh, spirit, uh, I don't drink alcohol. Spirit has told me not to drink alcohol. The, the irony is, is that what do we call alcohol? Yeah, they, spirits. Well, yeah, absolutely. Right. And you know yeah. why? Do you know why they call it spirits? I just uh, learned this. Have no idea. Because, um, well, they call it spirits because in some people, um, it can get us. It, it can access areas of our of our brain oh, okay. and our subconscious. Sure. It can make us it's like an angry drunk. I'm sure you have had friends and yes. family that have been in turn. They yeah. turn. And and that's kind of like, you know, they're, they're that's their subconscious coming out. Or or right. actually, you know, they're walking around with entities. We can have an, you know, we can talk about that in the next episode sure. what entities are. And 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 it it lowers the threshold for um you know psychic attacks, um, possessions. Again, take this with a grain of salt. This is completely woo-woo. Um and and um makes them more vulnerable to to you know lower consciousness to, to lower level yes. of consciousness. So that's why people innocently, it's not who they are. It's that 
it, it makes them more vulnerable to entities that that can wreak havoc influence them yeah and influence, influence them in, in sure. ways that are not always positive <clears throat> so, yeah yeah well daniel this has been amazing man i, I could talk to you all night long and and, and you know it, it's there's a connection here between you and i and it's really special yes, there is. and and i love it and and um i would love for you to share with the audience how how they can reach out to you and and book you sure. for a session and, and where you know um you, get, you should get the biggest plug. It should be like a 10 minute plug, but um, go for it. It'll, it'll take about 20 seconds. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they can find me if they want to get a reading. It's at www.spiritmediumdaniel.com. It's one long word, spiritmediumdaniel.com. Uh, and they can uh, book a session with me uh, either in person if they live nearby or they can do it uh, uh, Skype or FaceTime, whichever they want to do. It's fine with me. Uh, and, or, uh, they can check that website as well and they mm. can keep up with where I'm going to be because like I said, we're starting to do a festivals again. We got three of them Wonderful. this year, which I, I love we, my wife and I were just out in the front yard. We bought a canopy so we can put out, so we can do these outside. So ones. cool. <clears throat> so, uh, or they can get, uh, uh, they can watch our podcast. They can watch it or listen to it. It's at, uh, www.beyond dash the dash veil dot com and the show is called beyond the veil with daniel jackson me and <laughs> we talk about everything spirit uh but we also talk about ufos uh government and uh and uh oh, you go to people. you go to the the ufo uh, you go oh I, I you know you know it's interesting you mentioned that daniel do you i heard that that the most ufos the big the largest amount of ufo sightings were is in northern new jersey Bergen County for some reason. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes sense, uh, Jersey. Uh, yeah, because like, uh, you have those like uh, aliens, like, Jersey. like crazy people. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they like the pizza. Yeah, yeah, they Pizza's, do like it. And, and, and pizza, New Jersey has better pizza than New York. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and as you go south too into Delhi, yeah, pizza. So yeah, I think that's yeah, the reason. The, the aliens want they, they need a good slice of pizza now and again. They just come. Well, uh, I talk about like when somebody I'm first shows and. Uh, yeah. Uh, Beyond the Veil, uh, I talk about the correlation between aliens and angels uh, because there is an actual correlation between the two. Uh, and I, I tell people, because as I tell people all the time, angels do not look like men with wings. They just don't. Uh, what they look like, uh, well, you could listen. No, that's to just good. That was a marketing campaign by, uh, yeah, by, those by the apostles. The that's the apostles. You know, yeah. They were the greatest PR. They were, they were the greatest PR agency. They were like the, um, you know, um, What's that famous PR agency in New York? Anyways, go ahead. Oh, I, I know all about the apostles too. One of my previous lifetimes, I used to be one. I believe it. I, believe uh, it. I sat, I sat on the table uh, uh, in the uh, the Last Supper picture. Uh, look at Jesus and look third to the right. His name was Peter, and that was me. I believe. I just, it. I do. I. It's what they told me. I was but also. You have, but, but you had, but uh, but he didn't have his cool glasses as you have. I think. No, he didn't have. Or blue shirt. Or, and he but didn't I, write a Harley either. No, he didn't write a Harley. That poor well, him. You're a lot cooler. He didn't write one in this lifetime. But uh, yeah, I, I always tell people, I don't mess with the uh, past life regression and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, uh, no. Anyone else, if your life was so good the last time you were here, you wouldn't be here now because you would have fulfilled your purpose and you wouldn't have had to come back. Well said. And on that note, my friend, I, I want to have you on again and again and again because, you know, it's it's... I mean, this stuff is is near and dear to me, and not just from from my. It's it's also for our the listeners that just need some reassurance that that they're not alone, and that there Absolutely. are they have a they have a dream team working for them over time. It just they just don't pay attention to that dream team enough. Yes, and if Absolutely. and if and and that's really what people need to hear, especially now what's going on now in this day and age. Daniel, thank you so much, um, and. Yeah, let's plan something in, in the next, so, you know, after the summer. Yeah, yeah. whenever you're ready, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll do this again. Wonderful. Always got more to talk about. And, and always. There's, good, there's always good connection here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, it's, it's always, uh, uh, it, it's easy to talk to people who tell the truth, because people who tell the truth are always busy. Interesting. Can I take that? Can I, can I use that one? Yeah, you can use that if you want to. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, you're not uh, tra uh, copywriting that. Cool. Uh, no, you could just say, uh, 
uh, say that phrase and then go spirit meeting Daniel. <laughs> spirit meeting Daniel. Spirit meeting Daniel. Yeah. This quote, yeah, this quote is sponsored by Spirit yeah, meeting Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Daniel. Have a thank great, you, have a great rest of your summer, and uh, we will definitely be in touch. Appreciate it. Be good. Don't do any stupid shit. <laughs> Not this week. <laughs> I got too much work to do. Bye bye.